Welcome all of you to our laboratory one. Today's laboratory is about microscopes and cell structures. At the end of this lab, you will be able to define the terms magnification, resolving power, contrast, field of view, and working distance. And also, you will be able to recognize all the parts of a compound microscope and a stereo microscope. And you will be able to briefly define each the function of each of these parts. Also, we will demonstrate how to use a compound microscope and a stereo microscope and how to prepare a wet mount slide. Next part is microscope. For this, you can see the video. You need to carefully go through this video to understand each part of microscope and how to use it. When we use the microscope, you will come to the term magnification. What is magnification? Magnification is how much a size of an object is increased when you look through a microscope. So if you see the 4x, you know that in a microscope you have two lenses, eyepiece and an objective. In the eyepiece and objective, there is a magnification power embedded on that lens. If you look through the 4x magnification, that means the object is the size of the object is increased four times. And if you use the 40x magnification, that means the size of the object is increased 40 times than the actual size. The next term that you will come through when you go through the video is resolving power. Resolving power is the ability of the microscope to produce separate images of objects that are too closely together. For example, if you see two dots placed together very closely and if you look through the eyepiece and if you see images that overlap, that means the resolving power is not good. So if you can see these two dots separately without any overlaps, that means the uh, resolving power of that microscope is very good. Another term that you will come through when you look the video is field of view. Field of view is the area you see when you look through the microscope. For the next part, we will, you need to look the video to learn how to use the compound microscope and also the stereo microscope. To know how to use the stereo microscope, we have a video so you can go through this video very carefully. Now, let's start first with the compound light microscope. A compound light microscope has at least two systems, an illuminating system and an imaging system. The illuminating system, which concentrates light on the specimen, usually consists of a light source, condenser lens, and iris diaphragm. Imaging system improves resolution and magnifies the image. It consists of the objective and eyepiece, or another word, the ocular lenses. The objectives are four lenses mounted on a revolving nose piece. Each objective magnifies the image. Its magnifying power is etched on the side of the lens, which are 4x, 10x, 40x, or 100x. The eyepiece is the lens that you look through. Now let's start with how to use the compound light microscope. First, carefully remove the microscope from its cabinet and carry it upright with one hand grasping the arm and your other hand supporting the microscope below its base. Then, 
Place your microscope on the table. If it is necessary, clean the microscope's lenses with lens paper. Next, plug in the microscope and turn on the light source and increase the light intensity. If it is not already in the position, rotate the nose piece until the lowest power 4x objective is in the line with the body tube. The compound microscope provided in Mae Fa Luang University Biology Laboratory was designed by the manufacturer to have an additional condenser lens. At this point, turn the condenser adjustment ring in the counterclockwise direction and then turn the diaphragm lever to the left when using an objective with the magnification of 4x. Remember that when using magnification 10x or higher, do not forget to adjust the diaphragm lever to the right. After that, adjust the distance between the eyepieces to match the distance between your pupils. Focus a specimen by using the following steps. First, start with the lowest magnification of 4x. Then, place a microscope slide on the stage. Rotate the course adjustment knob to move the stage within 1 cm of the objective. Then, look through the eye pieces with both of your eyes open. Rotate the course adjustment knob to move down the stage until the image comes into focus. Then, slowly rotate the higher magnification objective lens 10x into place and be sure that the objective does not touch the slide. Find focus the image by only turning the fine adjustment knob. Adjust the aperture diaphragm so that the brightness of the transmitted light provides the best view by turning the diaphragm lever to the right or to the left within the stop position. At the end of your exercise, make sure that the lowest power objective lens, 4x, is in the right position. And then turn the course adjustment so that it is racked all the way down. And turn the diaphragm lever to the original position. Turn the condenser adjustment ring in the anti-counterclockwise direction. Remove the last slide from the stage and turn off the light source and unplug the microscope. Remove the dust on the microscope's body and carefully clean the lenses with the lens paper. And bring your microscope back to the cabinet and put it in place. Now, let's continue to the stereo microscope. A stereo microscope has a large working distance between the specimen and the objective lens. It is useful in viewing larger specimens and in manipulating the specimen. The large working distance also allows for illumination of the specimen from reflected light as well as from the transmitted light. Reflected light shows up surface features on the specimen better than the transmitted light does. 
Major parts of the stereo light microscope are illustrated in the figure 1.3 in your laboratory manual book. Now let's start how to use a stereo microscope. First, carefully take the microscope from the cabinet by using both hands to hold the base of the microscope. Then, put the microscope on the bench. And next, plug the power cord of the microscope in the power socket on the bench. And then, clean the objective lens and the eyepieces by using the lens paper. Next, turn the light sources on the stereo microscopes. You can see that the stereo microscope has two light sources, one from below and the other one from above. The switches are at the left and the right side of the microscope. After that, adjust the light intensity by turning the light adjustment scale located next from the light switch. After that, put the specimen on the stage and look into the eye pieces and then adjust the magnification knob to an appropriate magnification. After that, adjust the distance between the specimen and the objective lens while looking into the eye pieces until the object comes into focus. The light intensity can be also adjusted until the image appear on the eyes piece is appropriately seen. After that, when you finish the observation, reduce the light intensity and then move the objective lens into an appropriate position. Then, take the specimen out from the stage and turn off the light sources. Clean the objective lens and eyepieces with lens paper and then plug off and place the power cord on the microscope stage. Then return your microscope back to its cabinet and put it in the right place. So, we hope that you have learned everything that you need to know about using both compound light microscopes and stereo microscopes. So when you look through the microscope, you need to understand that what you will see is an increased image of the uh, object. So, first you need to calculate what is the overall magnification that this microscope produces. For that, you need to know the magnification of the eyepiece microscope, eyepiece lens and also the magnification of the objective lens. So the overall magnification will be the magnification of the eyepiece lens multiplied by the magnification of the objective lens. For these magnification powers, to know what is the magnification, you can see on the eyepiece and the objective lens. The, the magnification power is embedded on these lenses. We need to know how to measure the field of view. We measure the field of view with the ocular micrometer. You can see this inside the eyepiece lens. To do this, first we need to calibrate the ocular micrometer with the stage micrometer. In the stage micrometer, we know one division is equal to 0.01 millimeters. The first thing you need to do is you need to start by aligning the zeros of the lines of the two micrometers and then you need to look at which place the two lines overlaps exactly. You can see there are 40 divisions 
in the stage micrometer which overlaps with 60 divisions on the eyepiece micrometer. The 40 divisions in the stage micrometer, you know that one division on the stage micrometer is equal to 0.01 millimeters. So the 40 divisions equal to 40 divisions multiplied by 0.01 that means 0.4 millimeters. This 0.4 millimeter overlaps with 60 divisions on the eyepiece micrometer. Therefore, you need to know if 60 ocular divisions equal to 0.4 micrometers, how many divisions will be one ocular division? To know that, you need to divide 0.4 millimeters by 60. So you will get how much one ocular uh, division equals to. After you calibrate the ocular micrometer, you need to look, do the same thing for each of the objective lenses. Why? Because when you change the objective lens and when you look through the eyepiece, the number of divisions that you see the overlap changes according to the objective lens you use. So you need to do the same exercise for each of the lenses separately.